So we're now going to consider Newton's law of universal gravitation. In this video, we'll just introduce it and then in a later video, we'll come back and look at how Newton came up with this law. So Newton's law of universal gravitation can be written as F is equal to G M1 M2 on R squared. Now, in this equation, g is the universal gravitational constant, which is equal to 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared per kilogram per kilogram, so kilograms to the minus 2 there. m1 is the mass of one body in kilograms, m2 is the mass of the second body in kilograms, and r is the distance between the centers of mass of these two bodies. Now, this is a vector because it's a force and the direction is always back towards the second body. So if you have two bodies, they both create a gravitational force on the other body and both these forces are directed back towards those two bodies. Now, so far in this course, we've been considering the gravitational force close to the surface of the Earth. And we've been using the equation F is equal to mg, where little g here is the acceleration due to gravity. Now, if we consider our law of universal gravitation, you can see that as we get further and further and further away from a planet, the gravitational force decreases as the inverse square of the distance. So this is known as an inverse square law. But we can actually relate Newton's law of universal gravitation to the equation we've been using so far, mg, by considering what's going on near the surface of the Earth. So looking at the law of universal gravitation, we've got two masses. When we're considering the force between an object and the surface of the Earth, we're considering the gravitational force between that object and the Earth. So our two masses in the equation are, well, mass one can be the mass of the Earth, and mass two can be the mass of the object. We're also considering it close to the surface of the Earth. So this means that the distance between the center of the mass of the Earth and the object is approximately the radius of the Earth. And so we can write, well, little mg is equal to big G times the mass of the Earth times m divided by the radius of the Earth squared. And you can see that m, which is the mass of the object we're considering, cancels out in this case. So we can use this to calculate what little g should be. So little g should be equal to big G, which is 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared per kilogram per kilogram, times the mass of the Earth, which is 5.972 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, divided by the radius of the Earth squared, which is 6.371 times 10 to the 6 meters all squared. And so when we do that on the calculator, we get 9.818 newtons per kilogram. And newtons per kilogram is just the same as an acceleration. It's a force divided by a mass. So that is meters per second per second. So we can say, well, g is equal to 9.8 meters per second per second, which is what we've been using for it all along so far. So we'll come back to some of the subtleties about this equations in a later video. But it's worth noting now that in that equation we were using the average radius of the Earth and the Earth is not in fact a perfect sphere. It is slightly fatter around its center. So the radius at the equator is larger than the radius at the poles. And so this explains why we have slightly different values of G all around the Earth. Now the universal law of gravitation obeys the law of superposition. So what this means is that if we imagine a system where we had n separate objects each with their own mass, and we wanted to work out the total force on one of those objects, well, we just need to work out the force due to each of the other objects on that one object and sum them up as vectors. So as an equation, we can write that the net force on object one is equal to the sum of the forces from the other objects. Now, if we had a continuous mass distribution instead of a lot of discrete particles, and we wanted to calculate the total gravitational force on a point particle, which is some distance away from this continuous mass distribution, 
we'd just need to replace our sum with an integral. So to calculate the force on our discrete particle over here, we just integrate over the contributions to that gravitational force from each of the little increments of mass in the continuous massive object over here.